Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Fruitful Vine Podcast. I'm Tyler. I'm here with my pastor, Pastor Joel Urshan. Pastor Urshan, how has your day been so far? It's been a blessed day, a good day. Yeah. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made every day that uh, you're alive. It's a good day. Yeah. You know, this morning when I was preparing for today's podcast, I realized that there's a, a pun that I don't think you have used yet on the on an episode where I say like, how are you doing? And you have responded before, show far, show so good. <laughs> yeah. Show far, show good. Show well, far, that's show the sound good. of victory. That's yes, when you is. know. Yeah. That's when you know that victory is in sight. I, I, I don't know if we've used that yet, <laughs> but this morning I thought, if we haven't, show far, we need to get it out good. there. Yes. yes. Show far, show good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, quick question for you. Um, I'm a youth pastor, and... That has nothing to do with the fact that I've eaten a lot of pizza. But it also has to do with the fact that yeah. I've eaten a lot of pizza over my days. And the people want to know today, and by people I mean myself, do you have a favorite pizza topping or even a favorite pizza pizzeria? Pizzeria? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you, I enjoy deep dish pizza. Okay. And I enjoy uh, kind of a New York style pizza yeah so we have a pizza place in cincinnati yeah called two cities yeah and it's deep dish and new york style so it's chicago and new and, york yeah i like them both and i enjoy two you know, cities pizza you preach unity <laughs> and not only do you preach it you live it amen man you're out there just <laughs> participating we, in both everybody has something to offer yeah the chicago style pizza the new york style pizza they're both very valuable parts yeah. of the of the of the pizza yeah uh, purpose. Yeah. I've driven by it a ton of times and I've never been. And every time it's I, good. every time I yeah. say it, people are like, Oh, you got to go. But it's every time good. I drive by, there's a line yeah, like out the door. Yeah. It's good. And, yeah. and deep dish is just amazing. Uh, have you had Detroit style pizza? Well, I have, um, I have had, I mean, well, me back up. I've yeah. had pizza in Detroit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's new Detroit style. I think, um, I'm I'm gonna be wrong here, but I'm t- gonna take a shot in the dark. I think Detroit style is like the sauce on top. Okay, like uh, well now you know sometimes deep dish is that as well. Yeah, right? so I don't know, but that's not what you're talking about. I think it might be like pepperoni, cheese, and then sauce. I'm I'm okay. I'm completely butchering that. And someone from Detroit is gonna let us know in the comments. Yeah, that that's I right. Am. We 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 need and to the hear. crust is different. Yeah. Wes and our producer okay. is helping, is helping yes. us out. Thank you. <laughs> that, I'm going to bail us. myself out of this real quick. <laughs> quick question. Uh, yeah. Does does pineapple belong on pizza? Well, because in the spirit of unity, this yeah, question this is going to be is this is going to be the dividing yeah. line. Um, I I actually I really like pineapple, but I can't have it. Okay. It, the, I can't really eat it because of the acidity. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's a little it's a little much. Uh, for me and but I enjoy it but if you enjoy a Hawaiian style pizza then uh, then yeah pineapple belongs on on pizza if if that's a style that you enjoy okay but if that's not <laughs> then probably. See, never a straight never a straight <laughs> answer I think Donato's we've got Donato's here in Cincinnati and they have a, a Hawaiian yeah. style with pineapple sliced almonds yeah and cinnamon yeah I'm not I'm not super big on on sweet and savory together. Okay. I enjoy sweet, I enjoy savory. When they come together, sometimes I enjoy it, yeah. but uh it's not all the time. So for me, as for me in my house, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be no pineapple on the pizza. <laughs> yeah. Amen to that. And I feel like it's some days some days are ours, some days it's not. It depends on the season you're in. Yes. If you need to find out if your pizza or not. I don't know. I right now I would say no, but tomorrow I might say yes. Right, right. Um anyway, I can feel I can feel people listening to this who are firm believers uh in no pineapple on their pizza. Right, right. Getting upset. Yeah. And I can feel them I can feel their anger and frustration uh and authority on the on the subject burning with inside of them. Yes. And uh all, all jokes aside on that aspect, and they're, they're, they're talking bad about people who do put pineapple on their pizza. <laughs> I know today you want to get into a topic of um, what we say. Yeah. Uh, making sure that everything we say is fruitful, yeah, uh, spiritually fruitful, uh, and not speaking negative about 
people who put pineapple on their pizza or who disagree with you uh, in any other area of life. Yeah. We want to make sure that we always here on the fruitful vine, we always look at things through the lens of the fruit of the spirit. I know that's your goal for this podcast. Yeah. And I think sometimes we can compartmentalize the fruit of the spirit, mm-hmm. love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Um, with the spiritual side of our life. Right. And then maybe we compartmentalize the natural side. That's good. Um, right. Where we're not walking in the spirit, maybe at that exact moment. And so yeah. we will leave the fruit of the spirit, or I guess rather we would just leave the spirit yeah. out of the conversation we're having. And the fruit of the spirit is not something that we want to pick up and put down. And right. Now and then. No. It's something that is emanating out of us all of the time, right? Uh, in everything we do, and especially in everything we say, right, right. Well, absolutely, and um, and and you really, you really tapped into a line of thought that I think hamstrings us a, a lot of times. Yeah, uh, I hear statements like "I'm only human." Uh, well, if you've got the Holy Ghost, you're human, but you're a human who has the Holy Ghost. Yeah, and that does change things. Yeah. Um, I hear people say, I'm saved, but, and then they, they describe something they would have done yeah. in their former life. And th- that's defaulting to the old man that is supposed to be crucified with Christ. And I know that seems idealistic, and and and, I, and I'll, be, I'll be criticized by some for being, that's idealistic thinking. You can't expect that of people. Well, if that's your faith level, then you'll have to be content with the with the fruit that comes from that. Yeah. But I choose to believe the scriptures. Yeah. I choose to believe that we can walk in newness of life, that we can operate in a at a level of fruitfulness. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't mean to use the word level in a condescending way, but it truly you truly can level up to yeah. a place where you operate. We talk about operating in the gifts of the Spirit, and we should, and we do by the by the uh, goodness of the Spirit of God. But we need to operate in the fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. And so, when you default to a, I'm a I'm saved, but I might you know tear somebody's head off. Yeah. Um, when when that's when that's your default, you're going to live with the consequences of that. So you you really do truly need to choose. Yeah. Am I going? To, how am I going to live? And and I'm not saying that. Uh, that we that we are uh, that we're never going to have those moments where we lose our temper or where we uh, lose our cool, we might say. Uh, but those need to be few and far between, and they don't ever need to be the expectation. Mm-hmm. They don't need to be something that we just uh, have accepted. We need to recognize that we are to have a crucified flesh, crucified with Christ, dying daily, exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit. And that doesn't make you weak. That makes you strong. Yeah. Uh, meekness, humility, gentleness, goodness, that's not weakness. And we're not talking about the human version of those things no. where you're where you're you're passive and you are uh, somehow unable to be strong. No, no, this is the greatest strength. A, a man who has control of his spirit is stronger than the man who can take cities. And so that's the word of the Lord. And I choose to believe that, and I think we can walk in that. And what we say is a big part of how we mm-hmm. of how we need to appropriate that. And I think that a lot of times we underestimate the, the impact of, of what we say and and the way that it affects people, the way that it affects the body of Christ. The reason that we want to approach everything through the uh, through the uh, apparatus of the fruit of the spirit, the filter, let the, let the fruit of the spirit be the the guiding mechanism of the spirit to help us approach things. Fruit nourishes the body of Christ the way natural fruit nourishes the natural body. And, and when the members of the body of Christ are operating in the fruit of the Spirit, are governed by the fruit of the Spirit, are producing the fruit of the Spirit, 
then it's going to nourish the body of Christ. Mm. So one of the biggest one of the biggest challenges for people is is their mouth, their tongue, what they say. And um and there are a lot of different sins that can occur with what people say. Yeah. Lying, um slander, uh cursing, uh and and when you when you, I think we underestimate when when we curse someone, when we bear false witness, actually falsely accuse someone, when yeah. we when we lie, uh, and when we slander, the, these these are things that proceed out of us, and these are the things that defile a man. The Bible says it's what proceeds out of a man that defiles him, and so when we we have to recognize that the scripture teaches us what not to use the tongue for and it teaches us what to use the tongue for so the tongue is to be used for praising god it's it's to be used for the uh edifying of of the body of christ it's to it's to be used for good purposes and and even for rebuke and correction yeah. Th- those are positive uses of the tongue but all of it has to come through the fruit of the spirit so one of the things that I, I I wanted to just talk about a little bit today is is the the subject of gossip and slander when when you're speaking uh, ill of a person, um, it, it can become so easy for us to do that, especially in uh, the safety of friendship and uh, fellowship with people that we trust. Man, we can just let fly. Some things that don't need to be yeah. stated. Now, this is a complicated topic because people do need to talk about some things. They don't need to just let everything fester and internalize. So let's let's. I just want to try to break that down a little bit. What, mm-hmm. how to handle that? Um, and uh, I like to say it this way: If you absolutely must talk about somebody. Yeah. Talk about them to God. Talk about them to God. And let that be your first recourse. And, and, and you've got to ask yourself, why am I talking about this? Yeah. What, what is my purpose? When I sit down with somebody and I begin to level a charge right. at someone else or a complaint of someone else, what am I trying to accomplish? And it's a serious question mm-hmm. because I'm not suggesting that the complaint isn't warranted. I'm not suggesting that something shouldn't be said. I'm simply asking, what is the purpose? Mm -hmm. It may be that this person is a real problem, and there needs to be warning given. Mm -hmm. It may be that this person's behavior is creating a problem, and there needs to be warning given. That brings into question, okay, who are you talking to? What are you saying? What what is the what is the purpose? Is it a table of people where you're where you're just talking flippantly mm-hmm. and you're just letting everybody at that table hear things that it's not a warning about it's just a, a notification. It's just a notification. And you've got to in that moment you gotta stop and think. Mm-hmm. Do you want to defame that person? Do you want to defame them? Yeah, I'd ask yourself that question. What's my purpose? Do I want the people at this table to think uh, ill toward this individual? Do I want them to walk away and have a jaded view? Um, or, or do I? Is this something that I'm personally frustrated about, and I need to get it off my chest? There's a place for that. Yeah, there's somebody you can talk to about that. And that person that you're talking to, they need to be spiritually mm-hmm. uh, positioned to be able to absorb what you're saying. They need to be emotionally healthy yeah. to absorb what you're saying. And and you need to even be open because they're going to have a responsibility on some level to validate your feeling. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're they're going to need to respond to you carefully because they're going to need to not ignore the fact that this is affecting you in a certain way. However, you've got to be open 
to the idea that you might be wrong. Yeah. And you need to give this individual license to come back at you, push back at you. Uh, we use the term devil's advocate. I hate that term. Yeah, I do too. The devil doesn't need an advocate. No. We have an advocate. And I don't want to be the advocate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to advocate for the devil. But but the term means to imply, Yeah. let's take a step back and what we have bedeviled or what we have um, marked as evil is it let's let's re-examine this yeah. are is it all about that person are they the problem you suggest they are can we do some introspection first find out what role i have played examine yourself because you can't fix the person you're only going to be able to deal with yourself. And this individual that you have come to that is spiritually positioned, that is emotionally healthy, that is in a position to help, not just be uh, a, a part of a telephone yeah. system that spreads the rumor you want to spread. That's the big question. What's your motive? Yeah. What are we trying to accomplish the here? The flesh will seek out a yes man. Right. Your flesh will want to talk about this with someone who will agree with you. Yes. And you'll hold your tongue with someone who may who not might agree. not. Yeah, that's right. Because you know that's right. they might rebuke you. That is a really good barometer for where you are yeah. in your motive. Because you, we're not always the best judges of our motives. In fact, I'd say we're rather poor judges of our motives. Of yeah. <laughs> well, man, ask me how, what my, my motive is very pure. Thank yeah. you very much. Now get out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're not the best judges of our motives, so we need to let the Holy Ghost uh, help us to understand what our motive is, yeah. and that's a good barometer. Who do I want to talk to about this? Do I want to do I want to spread it? Is that what I want to do? I want to spread it, and if so, why? Why is 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 it a is it a matter of serious warning? Is it a matter of there's there's a problem here, and this person is could do much damage to many people. Or yeah. did they make you mad? Are you do you have a feeling of frustration with them for whatever it is? And and if that's the case, it, it, it it's okay. I'm not. I don't want to fault people for yeah. feeling those feelings of frustration. I want to channel that in the right way. Approach yeah. it through the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Take it to people who can help you. And I, when I say help, really the help that they bring is to shift your perspective while validating the fact that you have a feeling yeah. that you're trying to reconcile. But but help. maybe they can help shift your perspective and, and cause you just to examine yourself first. So I mentioned already, take it to the Lord in prayer. That's where you need to take these feelings First and foremost. And most of the time, when you go to God in prayer and you bring it to the Lord, most of the time, it gets resolved right there. And if it doesn't get resolved right there, many times you will at least receive direction for how to resolve it. And then you begin to realize you can go to someone who's spiritually positioned, emotionally healthy. They're safe. And when I say they're safe, uh, they're safe because it's not going to affect their faith. Yeah, and you know that it won't affect their faith uh, if you have to bring something to them, and they are actually in a position to help you understand it or help the person bring reconciliation to the matter. And the The Bible also teaches us, and we don't need to get away from Matthew eighteen. Yeah, go to the person. Right. But if you're not sure how to approach the person, the Bible the Bible talks about the fact that we that we uh, can confess faults one to another. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're if you're if you're prepared to follow Matthew 18, and you're afraid to, and you need to talk to somebody for spiritual counsel, and by Matthew 18, I'm referring to going to the person, right? And then if that doesn't change the behavior, uh, bringing uh, the mouth two or three witnesses. That's actually the context of yeah. where two or three are gathered in my name. There am I in the midst of them. Yeah. So. So going to someone to help you, how should I approach this? 
in the multitude, this is scriptural, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. But when you're sitting back just kind of shooting off about yeah. uh, about how you feel about somebody and what they did, and if you really examine your motive and your goal is to have a pure motive, you probably won't do that yeah. because because you're not you're not trying to accomplish something that's good and healthy yeah. uh, by doing that. If you're talking to people who can't help your perspective, they can't help the situation, and and they're simply a part of a telephone system that's going to make sure the word gets spread, yeah. that somebody's being ostracized, somebody needs to be looked at through a lens of suspicion. Yeah. And of course, un- unless there is a real need for that, and-, and there needs to be warning given, the Bible teaches us how to deal with those that are that cause division. Yeah, and th- there is a marking of those which cause division, but even that can be handled with discretion and with wisdom and with love. Mm-hmm. And with love, there's never a point at which we handle things outside the context of love. Yeah. Even correction is given in love. Yeah. Rebuke is given in love. Everything we do, uh, when we do it all in the name of Jesus, whether in word or deed, you can't separate that from the love no. of God. Uh, even the judgments of God, he, whom he loves, he chastens. Yeah. So so it, to your point at the beginning, where we kind of compartmentalize it, where we've got this fruit of the Spirit over here, yeah. but if that doesn't work... Or vice versa, <laughs> we're going to handle it this Through way. The flesh, yeah. I may be saved, but I still wait. Hold on, yeah. Um, you've got to reexamine that. So I just want to encourage our listeners to use your tongue to the glory of God. Yeah. Remember that words words are very powerful, and they they create circumstances. They create atmospheres. Um, John 1, 14, the word was made flesh. Mm-hmm. That's actually what words do. They become they become tangible. So what comes out of your mouth today and consistently, mm-hmm. at some point it's going to become very tangible. And what, what happens when we don't guard our tongue and when we do just begin to let fly all of our thoughts and feelings about a particular person, this or that, it creates schisms in the body. Of Christ, and what you might, what you, you may think this person's causing division, <laughs> and so uh, you share that with everybody, and um, you end up causing the same amount of division or more. It, it, you're not helping the situation. Yeah, to have a have a good approach to to how you handle things. Ask God. Go to God first. Go to God in prayer. Yeah. Resolve it there, and 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 if you can't get it resolved there, receive the direction as to how to. Resolve it. Yeah. So use your tongue for praising God, blessing people, and in even in areas of rebuke or correction. But but do that with wisdom and with love and and under under good godly authority. Yeah. You're still speaking the truth in love. Exactly. The truth is packaged in right in that love, and uh, it, you're speaking life. Right. If you if we compartmentalize and we leave the fruit of the spirit aside. Yeah. Then you can back up a few verses in Galatians and see probably what you're actually accomplishing. Right. Those works of the flesh, the fruit of the flesh. Exactly. Paul lists it. Yeah. And when you when you get to when you get to saying things that are not packaged in the fruit of the spirit, right. You might find find out that your frustration arose from pride. Yeah. And from envy. Many times. And from jealousy. Right. Right. And from malice. Right. And you're out there and You've got yeah. all these feelings, and when you stop and think about it, or when you have that spiritual person to help you, yes, you realize that actually it's you feel a certain way, right? And you want to right. feel justified in that. So we live in a digital world, yes. And in the, in the youth group, I have taught that um, speaking life isn't just a part of your mouth, but it also can come through your thumbs yeah. and your fingers, yeah. That's because right. I think some people will. Um, Myself included, at times past, have probably texted things yeah. uh, that you wouldn't say in person to the person's face. Yeah, maybe you would be mean in a text thread to them, or mean in a text thread uh, yeah. about somebody yeah. else. Yeah, um, gossip isn't just yeah stuff we say with our mouth. It's right. also now in the digital yeah in the digital world. And I've heard people say, you know, 
people say things on Facebook they would never say, yeah. you know, in the presence of those those people. And we want to keep, we want to make sure that the fruit of spirit also goes with yes. us online. Exactly, uh, exactly. In, in everything we do with our digital with our digital footprint. Absolutely. And remember, it's all going to be brought into judgment. Yeah. Every idle word you speak is yeah. going to be brought into judgment. And here's the thing that's interesting. You know, the, the Bible says that don't even utter it in private. Yeah. Because a bird of the air will carry it to who you who you didn't intend to hear it. Yeah. What does that mean? And it, it, it simply means um, some way or another. Yeah. It's going to get out yeah. there. When you sit there and think about it in private. Yes. The, the Bible says don't 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 say it in your chambers. You think nobody can hear you, but a bird of the air. And and that terminology is interesting, a bird of the air. Mm-hmm. You know, um the, the, when, when the when the 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 wings of a bird are are interesting in the scriptures and even the holy spirit descended it like a dove mm-hmm. it's it's referring to spiritual things so what you say in your chambers spiritually somehow it gets communicated yeah and 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 you may not even know it but when you're putting it out into the atmosphere, it's going to start affecting your body language. Yep. It's going to start affecting your texting now, as you mentioned. And some way or another, you yielding to that thing and giving it voice, that feeling, that frustration, that envy, that whatever it is, that pride, a lot of times it's our pride. Yeah. When you yield to it and give it voice, some way or another, somehow, it it gets carried upon the wings of a, of what the Bible would say of the bird, and 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 it gets known to those who you didn't intend to know it. And it may take a little while, but before long, people start figuring out. I think they're. I, think they're, I don't think they like me. I don't think they. Yeah. I think they're talking bad yeah. about me or something of that. You know, I'm just saying, it's going to be known. The, the, I remember uh, one of our. Teachers at, at the school we grew up in in Indiana, Sister Unger, she would say, oh, man, she said it frequently, be sure your sins will find you out. Yeah. Man, don't forget that. Every idle word you speak is coming up in judgment. Yeah. And, and, and we'll be judged for things before. That's why we thank God for the Lamb's Book of Life, mm-hmm. that we can be covered by the blood of the Lamb, and we're thankful that judgment begins at the house of God because we don't want to be judged for those things that we are guilty of. Thank God for repentance. Thank God for the washing of the blood through baptism in Jesus' name. Thank you for the infilling of the Holy Ghost because that's what qualifies us to escape that, that judgment we're deserving of. And, and every idle word, every idle word is going to be brought into judgment. That means the stuff you didn't mean that means the stuff you weren't, yeah. you're going to have to give an account for all did, of it. I didn't mean it. Right, I did, yeah. right. I, you said it. And we, yeah, we said it in frustration. I don't think we fully appreciate yeah. how permanent the, the, the spoken word really is yeah. in, the, in, in the spiritual uh, context of things. So don't just be careful what you say. Be intentional yeah. about what you say. Maybe that's where that term came from. A little birdie told me. Yes, <laughs> that is exactly right. A little birdie told me. That's, I don't know where it came from. That's right. Someone told me, you don't like me anymore. <laughs> uh, that's right. I was reading last week Psalm 39. It opens up uh, with David dealing with people I, who I believe are coming against him. Mm-hmm. And he's, his frustration level is building and building. And I'm like, man, I can relate to him sometimes. Mm-hmm. And it's building and building, and I, I think he uses words like you know, it's 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 like a fire. It's rising in me. My mouth is just ready to explode with backlash or uh, bitterness, and he's right. just ready to just let these people have it verbally. Yeah. yeah. And when he opens his mouth, he says, "Lord." Yeah. And he goes into a prayer. There it is. And man, I don't know what was going on that day, but I just felt like the Lord was like, "Here you go. This is yes. this is it." When you feel that level of frustration, or right anger and you don't even know why if it's pride if it's jealousy if it's justified if it's real when you feel that level of right of of heat rising yes yes. uh and getting ready to to spill out of your mouth onto somebody or into a into a text thread turn it yes to the lord that's right 
there's a situation going on right now. Yeah. Help me find out where what the root source that's right. of my feelings is and and that's that's never the wrong avenue to take. Never. never. I know you earlier you were mentioning about leveling up. Mm-hmm. And uh there's the natural and then there's the supernatural. Mhm. And when we when we revert out of the supernatural, we revert back, just back to our nature. That's right. And that's not who I want to be. It's not I don't who want I to go want. back to my nature. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've heard people say, "Well, I haven't had my coffee yet," or "It's after my bedtime." Yeah, that's yeah. what I want to say. Uh, isn't the Holy Ghost works before you have coffee and after exactly. your bedtime? Exactly. Yeah, and, and, uh, and really, what they're saying is, we, I've got this flesh. Yeah, that's a literal. Uh, reference yes. to the fact that the, the flesh is working against me right now. The yeah. flesh is irritable. Yeah. You're getting on the flesh's nerves. Yeah. The problem is they think that something else is going to help fix it. <laughs> right. I need a little bit of caffeine and it's or the I need spirit to go to bed. of the Lord. Yeah. Exactly. We just need the Holy Ghost. We need that. We need to pray through every day. Yeah. Amen. That's pray right. through that yes. flesh. Yes. Yeah. Crucify it daily. Amen. Pastor Amen. Urshan, thank you so much oh, uh, for, for blessing us today, blessing us uh as we go forward from this place, speaking life with our mouth, yes. with our life, with our thumbs, yes. uh, with our digital footprint, with everything we do, we speak life. Yes, amen. amen. It's been a good day today. Amen. God bless you today. Uh, listener, watcher, viewer, we thank you for tuning in. We pray God's blessings over you today. In Jesus' name.